So I'll begin. I have no conflict of interest related to the subject of the lecture presentation. This is a normal chest radiograph. You will learn about quality criteria for the chest radiograph. You'll learn about normal features, and you will learn which difficult areas to concentrate on. How? By suggesting a reading guide for the radiograph, I'll explain three simple quality criteria. I'll show some normal features so that you avoid false positives. And then the objectives of the whole session is to teach you to accurately interpret the chest radiograph and hopefully reduce your risk of missing significant lesions. Here I'd like to mention when I talk about the chest x-ray how indebted I am to Jose Caceres. He taught me how to teach about the chest x-ray. Uh, he gives lots of advice and one of his uh, key uh, advices is that to recognize the abnormal it is necessary to know the normal. That's why we're starting with the normal chest radiograph. He also taught us this formula that our basic knowledge of any uh, radiological examination, particularly of the chest x-ray, uh, when we're looking at plain films, is based on the frontal view, a lateral view, and very importantly on using previous films if they're available. And the more experience you have, the more pra practice you get at reading chest x-rays, the better you will become. Now, eye tracking studies were performed in, right through the 1970s through to the 1990s, looking at how uh, different categories of uh, persons and physicians and radiologists report and review images. On the chest x-ray, if you ask a novice to look at an x-ray, they will show some interest to the white area in the middle and have their eye attracted by this black area, which is the gastric air bubble below the diaphragm. If you ask a medical student to look at a radiograph, they may have had some tuition during their studies. They will have learned that there are some areas of importance to be looked at, maybe up at, in the upper regions of the chest, perhaps one of the hyla, and they have an idea that it's important to look at the bases too. If you ask an experienced radiologist, then this is something that we hope that they will achieve. They will scan the whole image. So the message here is do remember to look at the whole image look at the periphery, move into the center. This shows uh, an arrow which means that you compare the two lungs, you carefully scan both lungs and the stars, and we'll come back to this later, uh, where you should concentrate upon the hidden difficult areas where we all make mistakes. This will be explained as I go along. Now, let's begin with chest radiograph quality criteria. Here you have a normal film. There are three criteria to observe before discussing the x-ray, whether it's normal or abnormal. Please check that the patient has been able to achieve full inspiration. This is done by counting the anterior ribs, so six anterior ribs or nine to 11 posterior ribs. Please check that the x-ray is correctly centered, that the spinous processes are visible between the two clavicles and there is the same distance between the spinous processes in each clavicle, and then that you can see the intervertebral space between uh, the vertebra through the mediastinal shadow. Let's look at this x-ray. This uh, fails all three criteria. There is rotation. The clavicle here is just about in line with the midline. There is poor exposure and the patient hasn't been able to take in a deep breath. We can only see four anterior ribs. Now, this may not be a quality problem from a technical point of view. If you notice, the patient is obese. This may be the best way of obtaining the chest x-ray in this patient. Now, on this x-ray, if we show it to medical students, about 50% of medical students miss a three-centimeter tumor on this x-ray. So if you're carefully observant, hopefully you will have picked up this cancer in the right upper lobe. It may be because of the image quality that the conspicuity of this lesion was less. They have the correlation with the CT scan. So good quality images are important to pick up lesions. Let me share some normal features with you which are very useful uh, in everyday practice. Here you have the normal chest x-ray. This is the same patient now, a couple of minutes later. What is the difference between these two radiographs. This talk is called Back to Basics. So Back to Basics, this is full inspiration, this is full expiration. Don't 
interpret this as a large heart with uh, increased vascular markings and heart failure. It's the difference between inspiration and expiration. Normal film again. What about this patient? This was covered by Thomas Frauenfelder in his talk on nodules yesterday. What do we see here? We see an opacity at the right base. Is this in the lung or not in the lung? It's important to note that there is um, slight obliquity. This left shoulder is more anterior as the uh, clavicle is seen closer to the spinous process. This slight uh, uh, obliquity can be sufficient to increase the visibility of a single nipple. Now, how do we know that this is not within the lung? If you have a lateral view, then you will check that the opacity is not visible. But more importantly, and Thomas Frauenfelder covered this yesterday, is to look at the border of this lesion. If you look carefully, it is ill-defined in its upper margin, well-defined in the lower margin. This is not surrounded entirely by air. It cannot be in the lung. It's either in the pleura or on the patient. So use the lateral view, or if you're in any doubt, you can repeat the radiograph with nipple markers. What about this patient? We have an abnormal contour to the heart. You can't see the right heart border. The silhouette sign will be explained in later talks. This uh, is difficult to interpret if you don't have a lateral view. If you look at the lateral view, carefully examine the position of the sternum. This is a situation which is called pectus excavatum, where the sternum is abutting the heart, which is displaced laterally, and then you lose the right heart border. And this you must not confuse with right middle lobe pneumonia, where you also lose the right heart border, much more readily seen on a lateral view. And if you uh, know this variant, then you will not mistake this as a right middle lobe pneumonia. How about this patient? There is an opacity over the right lung. What did we do here to explain this opacity? Well, we repeated the x-ray an hour later on the same day. What is the difference between these two radiographs? Well, we gave an instruction to the technician to remove the hair braids. Okay? This is something that is seen if you have someone with wet hair or dreadlocks. You can see this sometimes over both apices. So don't be confused by hair on the chest x-ray. Different situation now. There's an opacity here in the lower lobe. We don't know which side yet, but uh, something called the spine sign will be discussed later. There's an increased density here over the lower part of the spine, which will be more radiotransparent than the upper region. You can only see one diaphragm. If you carefully look at the frontal view, it was decided that it was behind the heart here. And this was reported as round left lower lobe pneumonia. Now, the patient didn't have a single symptom of pneumonia, uh, no uh, abnormality on his blood test, so a CT scan was requested. And you have the answer here. This is fatty density. This is a Bochtelec hernia through the left hemidiaphragm. So don't confuse a Bochtelec hernia with a pneumonia. Another variant here. What about this rounded opacity in the same region uh, of the, in the retrosternal, retrocardiac space? I'm sorry. Is this a lung cancer? Well, carefully look at the position of the patient. There is a severe cyphosis here. This increases the, the heart size, and this is not uh, lung cancer. This is a normal lower horizontal thoracic aorta with a nice reformat here. So be careful of false positives from normal variants. For the last part of my talk now, I will tell you how to learn which difficult areas to concentrate on. These are where abnormalities are hidden, and this is where we make mistakes, and if you know where mistakes are made, then you can concentrate on these areas when you're reporting the film. These checklists are provided by uh, Jose Caceres on the frontal view. Carefully review the apices, the column of area of trachea, the hyla, behind the heart and behind the diaphragm. On the lateral view, there is a checklist. You look at the sternum and the spine. You compare the density of the anterior clear space with the posterior clear space, that is this region and this region, which should be similar. And again, carefully look at the column of area of trachea. Make sure there is no soft tissue density projected over the trachea. 
And remember that about 30% of the lung surface is hidden on the frontal radiograph by overlying structures such as bones, hyla, heart, diaphragm, and then better seen with the help of the lateral view. This is courtesy of Dr. Vlahos, which summarizes uh, the analysis of these hidden abnormalities. This is the most important slide in this pr first talk. So this is the one that you should take a photograph with, of, sorry, with your cameras and use when you're back uh, in your office. There are plenty of mediastinal lines which we were taught as younger radiologists to recognize. Now these are a little bit forgotten because we use cross-sectional imaging. Uh, I've, been, I've drawn these colored lines on a, on a radiograph here. These will be explained to you in much better uh, and greater detail by Marielena in the talk on the mediastinum. Finally, please put yourself in good viewing conditions when reporting the chest radiograph. Avoid interruptions, avoid fatigue, don't wear sunglasses. That doesn't help interpreting the chest x-ray. As there was no introduction, I just added uh, two cases where we can now practice uh, the tools which I've just given you. For those of you who attended the errors on chest imaging on Thursday, there was over 1,000 people in the room A uh, to follow Dr. Tack's talk. Uh, this is a test of short-term memory. I'm sure some of you were there. Okay, so let's see if you can find the abnormalities on this x-ray again. For those of you who discover it for the first time, it's an interesting case. So a 70-year-old man, here is the radiograph. Carefully check the difficult areas, the apices, the hyla behind the heart, behind the diaphragm. Where is the lesion? Where is the missed lesion? Where are the missed lesions? Right hilum, left hilum, mediastinum, more than one lesion. So there's no interactive voting in this room today. There is more than one lesion. Let me help you. The first one, that which most people are able to detect, is in the hilum. There is a lymph node here. There's an abnormal contour. That's easy. Remember George. Now, you've seen him before on Thursday, but for those who don't, this is a very important message. This is satisfaction of search. Keep looking. There is an abnormal contour, which is difficult to pick up in the mediastinum, but if you carefully look at the column of air of trachea, remember that checklist I gave you? There is a soft tissue opacity overlying the trachea that is abnormal. It has to be explained. And I'll explain that with the CT scan in a minute. Here you have this necrotic lymph node bulging into the posterior wall of the trachea. There it is on the CT scan with the reformat. And the explanation is that it displaces the azygous vein and that you can see here in the right tracheobronchial angle. So satisfaction of search, remember George. And remember that slide I showed you of eye tracking. Look at the whole image, look at the periphery, look at the bones. And if you carefully analyze the bones, you will not miss this mythic bone lesion. It is normal to lose the cortical contour of a lower rib where it thins out, but it is abnormal to lose the density of its cortical upper margin. So there is a lytic bone lesion. So three potentially missed lesions, one obvious in the hilum, one more difficult in the mediastinum, and one very difficult, the rib metastasis, which you can only pick up if you carefully view the whole film. Remember satisfaction of search. Remember George. I will finish with a second case just to introduce some of the signs which will then be discussed by my colleagues. Of a 71-year-old woman, she is, has fatigue and weight loss. This x-ray was reported as normal. Okay, let's use the tools, use the checklist again. Apices, hyla, behind the heart, behind the diaphragm, on the lateral view, the clear spaces, behind the sternum, behind the heart. Where is the missed lung lesion? I'm going to help you. It's in the left low lobe. I'm going to explain how this could be picked up. Now, this wasn't picked up. It was reported as normal, but it didn't matter too much because very shortly after the chest x-ray, the patient developed a hemoptysis. And on the CT scan, we found this centi five centimeter tumor, five centimeter in the craniocaudal plane uh, in the left lower lobe. If you use this method of looking and checking at these hidden areas and learn about mediastinal lines, which we'll be in a moment, learn about the silhouette sign, which will be explained. You will notice that there's an opacity here because this parotid line has disappeared. So something is abutting the aorta. There it is on the CT scan. These two signs of the silhouette sign and the spine sign in a left lower lobe pneumonia will be explained in a few minutes. So the radiologist here was saved by the patient's symptom. 
So, in conclusion, correct perception depends on a systematic evaluation of the X-ray. Please be aware of common pitfalls in these difficult areas. Try to increase your sensitivity, but avoid false positives. And, of course, you can always repeat imaging if you have any doubt or request further imaging in specific scenarios. So please don't worry. Everyone makes mistakes. The five of us this afternoon are here to help you. We will provide you with a helmet. We will hold your hand and we will show you the way. And I will hope that by the end of the talk, we will have helped you to reduce your error rate. And I wish you good luck. Thank you very much.